everybody. My next guest took second place in last week's New Hampshire primary despite having been endorsed by the New York Times. Please welcome the governor of Ohio, John Kasich. Congratulations on coming in second place in New Hampshire. Well, you know, I, I won in Dixville Notch. I beat Trump uh, with 60% of the vote. But that means like three, three votes to two. To two. Yes, okay. Exactly. Now, what is it about this race? Like, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, 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 Rubio was crawling at being in third place in Iowa. You're thrilled about being second place in New Hampshire. How is losing winning? Well, look. Nobody, you remember when I was here the last time, not a person had a clue who I was. I knew. Yeah. They well, told me right before you walked yeah, on. Exactly. <laughs> and what happened is New Hampshire is a place where you can kind of get on a rocket ship and uh -huh. become known. And it's really, it's really happened. So I went to South Carolina. That's my home state. You know what's interesting is that they told me that when you leave New Hampshire and you go, you go to South Carolina, everything has to change. Your message has to change. Mm -hmm. My message hasn't changed one iota. Bringing people together. All right. Well, your your, your communications director, your communications director, sent along a little bit of your message here. Can I can I yeah, encapsulate sure, it for a second? Sure. About running a different campaign than any other candidate. Positive, focusing on solving problems, bringing people together, not dividing. Uh, saying you can't be positive and win, but he's doing it. He believes there's hunger in America for it to come together to solve our problems. People everywhere are responding to it. Now I've said all that. You can't. You have to answer my question. Okay. Now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've said everything. Okay. Well, he, he missed one. He missed one. What, what did he miss? We need to be Americans before we're Republicans and Democrats to fix the problems. <laughs> in this I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll join you on that one. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Last Sunday in the in last Saturday night's debate, you said that that debate or these debates have become demolition derbies. But America's the car, right? Who could possibly win in a demolition derby? Well, I said there was a demolition derby, but my car kept running around the track because I avoided it. And, Stephen, look, people are getting tired of the negative. You know, in New Hampshire, I took a Shut pounding. Shut up. <laughs> you got a big laugh. Got a yeah, big laugh. You're not tired of it yet. It's a yeah, crowd pleaser. But you know what? We're not sure they're voting for you over me. We'll have to oh, wait that's true. and see. That's true. I think they would. Would you vote though. for me? <laughs> That's not fair. No. That's not fair. Well, but listen, ask about Trump, me. Trump, ask about Trump, me. Trump. Oh no, no, he's the guest. <laughs> Trump, would you vote for him? <laughs> hey, that's not bad. That's a New York crowd. So, wait, but Trump is very negative. Cruz is very negative. They're doing fine. Uh, what do you mean people don't like the negative? Look, I think people want to know what the solutions are. I mean, I, I think they're nervous about their jobs and they're worried about their kids not having a decent life and uh, an ability to have the kind of life that they had. Now, when and I so, listen to the Republican debates, it sounds like America is like just a burning dumpster fire. <laughs> and it, it doesn't feel like America well, is a burning dumpster Steve, fire the right debates, now. The debates are the dumbest thing going because I'll tell you why. Look, it's sort of like explain your entire life story in 30 seconds. I mean, Harry Truman couldn't get elected this way. Uh, the thing I love are the town halls. Harry Truman was not elected actually the first time. I know, but he, he won re-election, <laughs> you remember. But it, yeah. my point is, is that it's, it's, it's sound bites. And you know, how are you going to elect the president on the basis of a clever sound bite, particularly if the, cl if, if the sound bite is designed to attack somebody else? Look, let me, let me just tell you so you understand. If I can't win by being, you know, fundamentally positive, what's the point in winning? I mean, you, you ought to win. Okay, and, and, and so what's the, what's, the positive, what's the positive message? I mean, the positive message that I'm hearing so far is that I'm positive. But what's your positive vision well, for you, America? You, uh, look, I mean, we have, to, we have to balance budgets, have common sense regulations. We've got to cut taxes. So some regulations, okay. Oh, yeah, You're yeah, running absolutely. as a Republican. No, no, some so, regulations, okay. No, some, look, the Republican Party is my vehicle. It is not my master, okay? It has never been. So here's the thing, Steve. And look, boom, boom. I got a mic drop on that one. Yeah, That's but, crazy. But, but here's the thing. Look, I was the chairman of the budget committee when we balanced the federal budget. We've had four years of a balanced budget. We paid down a half a trillion of the national debt. And jobs were. That was going... under a Democratic president. That's though. right. Well, I mean, we. Right, you so don't you think, can work with it. So you can work with the Democrats? Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to. Should you be elected president? In the last 330 days in your office, if a vacancy became. Open on the Supreme Court, yeah. 
Would you look at the Constitution, see the words, the president shall, and go, maybe later? No, I, I'll, I'll tell you what the problem is. Soon as Scalia died, it was one minute after his death and the politics started. Mm -hmm. We are so divided down there. Mm -hmm. And my approach is this. I've, I've said the president ought to withhold this, and then we're going to have an election, and everybody well, wait, here... Wait, we had an election. We had an I election know. 2012. Well, I look. If can I like a, a, no, probably no, not. Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead. No. All I'm saying is it's an opportunity for people to, number one, vote for president mm -hmm. and also have a say on who's going to be on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. If I were president, just like when I'm governor of Ohio, you have to bring people together. Uh, and you can't have all this fighting back and forth like we have in Washington. Mm -hmm. Look, you can't solve these problems, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Social Security, you can't solve the border, you can't get the economy growing unless you have some sense of unity. So if you were president and you were President Obama, you would say, I will not appoint anyone. No, I'm saying if it I were, it, no, if I you were president, question, would you we're not going to have this division. Because I'm going to spend my time building bridges so that we can grow this economy. You said, you yeah. said, you said, if I All get right. this right, you said that the president should not appoint anyone unless they could be unanimously. I, I said a claim. Stephen, look, the president's going to send the nominee up and they're not going to confirm him. But no one and, will be unanimously. No, approved. I don't mean you. I'm talking about somebody where the overwhelming consensus says that's the person we want. And that isn't going to happen. We now. won't even get that with president. How look, could you possibly get look, that? Look, you're going to have an election. Let me tell you, you're going to have an election now in, before we know at the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. And then that person who's elected president will have the confirmation to be able to appoint who they want. And I think it will be a more orderly, less political fight than what we're seeing now. So That's what you I don't, think. But you, you don't think that presently exists in the Constitution no, I don't, when it says yeah, the president I think shall he, appoint? I think he can, well, he can, he, no, he can't appoint. He can nominate. Nominate. And then the Senate is, right. carries out their responsibility. It doesn't, say, it doesn't say the president can do it, you know, if it's not his last year. It says the president shall. No, I, I, look, all I'm saying to you is I'm tired of all the fighting down there. I'm not fighting And this is, you. no. This I'm not is, fighting. I'm talking about down there. Oh, down there? And when I'm what, saying, in South Carolina? Yeah. They like fighting down there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what I want to do is I want to have respect between the parties again. I want them to stop demonizing one another. And I want, again, to have everybody remember that we have to pull together, in my opinion, with conservative programs to raise the country. I did it when I was budget chairman. I've done it in Ohio. And I want to go back and unify the country and do it as president. That's what I want to do. And I see right now this fighting over this judge yep. isn't going to work out. Well, that's Good all luck, Governor. Good luck. Thank you so much for being all here. Right.